Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Darren Fox. Uh, I have the absolute honor and privilege of being the principal at East Glen High School. I've been in the principal for 18 years, four different schools. Um, I really thrive on the challenges that we have and opportunities that lay in front of us. And East Glen's an incredible place, but it's gone through a lot of challenges. Um, we're a relatively small high school in the city. Uh, we're 750 students. Um, about one-fifth of our population are First Nations, Métis and Inuit self-identified students. Um, so when we entered into the school two years ago, you know, we really embarked upon a, at a wonderful journey and there's a lot of things that we have done um, to really enhance what's happening in the school. I have Jade Brown, who's our First Nations Métis and Inuit liaison here, and she's going to be leading us through most of our presentation, as well as Scott Poon, one of my assistant principals. So thank you for this opportunity, and I'm just going to turn it over to them. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jade Brown Tatusis. I come from the Red Pheasant Cree Nation in Saskatchewan, located on Treaty 6, first, or Treaty 6 territory. Uh, my grandparents are Verna Denny and Victor Denny, as well as Shai Brown as and uh, Georgina Smith. My parents are Tony Brown and Christine Baptiste. And the reason why I introduced myself this way is it was something that I was always taught, that we are connected from our generations behind us, our ancestors. And I share that because I might have a Kukum, a Mushum, or a cousin in the room because as a community we're always connected but by knowing our family and where we're from we're able to make that. So I am the eldest of four and I am the first in my family to graduate from high school. I'm also the first in my generation of my cousins to graduate from post-secondary in which I achieved a Bachelor of Arts degree from the Faculty of Native Studies at the University of Alberta. With my family life, I was very blessed to have both of my parents, and like I said, they brought me up on the powwow trail. But I also suffered a lot from the intergenerational effects of residential schools that my grandparents attended. So there was a lot of substance abuse, there was a lot of violence, there was a lot of hardships at home. And going to school was kind of my escape. It was the way that I was, it was something that I had in control of, something that I controlled. So going to school was my place of healing. It was my place to be with my friends. And it was a place to connect with the community. And that's why I think I, I did so well. But in my short time, I've been blessed to be the Aboriginal liaison at East Glen for the past five years. And being at East Glen, I'm the first Aboriginal liaison at East Glen. Just being at East Glen, as I got into my position, I tried to think, what helped me to get through high school? What helped me to achieve that degree? And what could I have needed to be more successful, to feel more confident in what I was doing? And so as I entered my position, that's something I bring forth to my students. And one of those big things was my culture and my connection to my community and just my social network, having that support within my school and within my peers. So as I, um, my five years at East Glen, I like to present a lot of cultural opportunities, whether it's beating club on Thursdays, Wednesday morning smudge, going to cultural camps, attending ceremony. I do a lot of academic planning. I'm able to advocate for the students and go to their teachers and let them know when there's something difficult going on in their life and to make arrangements with their homework. Post-secondary and career planning, letting them know that what they're doing is totally achievable. A lot of them are the first in their family and that's something that I can relate to. So just letting them know that there are role models and that this is a path that you definitely can take as difficult as it is and as much as hard work as you have to put in is definitely achievable. And then just social. Once again, community is huge. It takes a community to raise a child and that is still very true today. So at East Glen, we have such a strong community with our teachers, with our various support staff, with our administrators. And that's something I take a lot of pride in because about 75% of my job is crisis intervention. Every day I have almost one or two students that come to my room in the school and just kind of break down crying. And at first I thought maybe I'm doing a really terrible job because I have on a constant influx students that come forward with hardships and uh, just are over overwhelmed and emotional. But then I reflected back on it that they had somebody that they could connect with. They had a connection. They would come into the school even though they carried so much already on their shoulders and on their plate, and they would come to an adult and they would ask for help. 
And that gave me pride in knowing that they had somebody that they were connected with and able to reach out to. And I don't have all the answers. I definitely tell them that. I can relate to a lot of the things that they're going through, but just having that person is what means the most to children. And I'm not the only person within Eastland that they reach out to, but they have teachers, they have other support. And I, I, as much as I can speak to the work that I do or that my staff does, I like to empower the student voice. They're the ones who tell us what's working and what's not working, what they're interested in and what they want to do. So it, it's along the similar vein um, as, as, our, as our, our last speakers, and it's about that intentionality of where we go. So when we take a look, we really wanted to know that in order to re reduce that achievement gap, we needed to raise those expectations for staff and for students. Uh, the improvements that, that, that we are undertaking, the alignment, it, it's completely connected to Edmonton Public Schools, uh, the four cornerstone values of accountability, collaboration, equity, and integrity. So when we tr try and take a look at these items, we wanted to set that, that culture of the high expectation. Um, we start looking at how can you, you enter into a new situation, you want to be able to watch, you want to be able to listen, and, and then hopefully that's where you'll start to learn. And when we l hear the stories from our students, we want to have that knowledge first. It was about identifying key personnel on staff. It was about listening to what staff and students had to say. And as we collected more information from our school and from our catchment, that's how we were able to better align the resources and how best to address student needs. Creating meaningful relationships. The stories that, the, the story that Jade had walked you through and the stories of, those are just some of our students. We actually had to cut back that visual. Um, it was probably about 10 minutes long and, and that didn't even encompass the students that wanted, the other students that wanted to participate. But what we were able to do was that we were able to find those meaningful relationships. You, you couldn't just artificially place something and hope that that would work. We were listening, we were providing the academic and extracurricular opportunities. Very, very important, we feel. Uh, we're fortunate to have Jade Brown Tatusis working on our staff, but it's about her having that dedicated space where students felt that they were safe and they were welcome. Jade conducts entry surveys to kind of solicit information from students and that's to gain again that information and, and allow the students to feel that empowerment and it drives a lot of the work and the direction that they take. This also was involved, uh, sorry, evolved to include a First Nation Métis Inuit graduation coach and Matthew's new to us this year but his collection and monitoring of data helps us decide where and when to best intervene uh, if intervention is required. We also have a eight person student services team. There were three assistant principals uh, over the last couple of years and I'd like to think that we, we, we worked hard, we tried hard and, and I think for sure our, our intentions were there but sheer resource and time just couldn't match the needs that were necessary. So that's evolved itself into including what's called an all-in for youth. We have a mental health therapist, two success coaches, we've got an on-site uh, after hours, critical, critical hours coach, there's an in-school mentor, uh, roots and wings worker that then actually go into the homes and and I'm, I don't want to forget our school resource officer who is who's not only just a school resource officer it's a connection to something greater and that goes beyond the the walls of your school those have been really really important establishing those systems and processes and, and you can't have anything that's haphazard and you can't have anything that's a band-aid that'll perhaps address a situation but won't actually support something longer term we had a flex block and if you're in the high schools you'll you'll know through high school redesign a lot of s high schools took that approach of allowing a lot of students to, to direct themselves but direction without structure leads to a lot of misdirection so we were able to fine tune that and have academic focus and that's the priority we had to have uh, a mechanism to collect m missing and incomplete work and a really small stat to that was we were able to collect over a thousand pieces of incomplete or unfinished data in the first couple weeks of, a, of, of the system that we had put into place. Our student services team, we, we meet regularly. We have an all in for youth huddle and, and, and that's why I was a little bit late because we, <laughs> we meet every single Thursday and it's students that are on the radar. You wanna make sure that they're 
at the forefront because it's really easy for them to fall behind and it's easy for us to not pay the attention that they deserve. As well, we look at student achievement. Your, your, your teacher awarded marks. We have monthly in terms report cards. You need to take that data and you need to use it to direct your interventions. If, you, if, if we, again, simply leave it for accidental interventions, accidents are gonna happen. Um, our, our principal, Mr. Fox, was able to institute that student advisory council and that's another process and a structure that allowed for student voice. Jade has spirit wolves and that particular leadership group has spoken to uh, th at the Escuela Awards and, uh, and assisted with that. They have developed that personal skill and that confidence to go speak to an audience such as yourselves and, 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 and share their stories and confidently share their ideas. Uh, we also have an academic support center that's in, a, that's in place. We made sure that there was an assistance, a structure to go along with the expectation. And that is high school completion. That's high expectations the way it works. Uh, we also accessed <coughs> our district and community partners. So when we have Orange Shirt Day, when we attend fall, winter, spring feasts it's a w it's with partnerships y we're not in isolation and when jade runs uh, the uh, average indigenous uh, <laughs> games that we that we had last year and i think we're ha we're on 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 scheduled for another one it's about involving the elementary it's not just in our immediate area it goes beyond that and it's inviting elders from the community it needed to be a greater wrap around approach we were very fortunate that the first time in its inception, Edmonton Public Schools has a career pathways uh, sort of division and in concert with our First Nation Métis Inuit unit downtown, we worked together and we had a, a spring sort of boot camp. Students were earning credits, they were learning skills such as uh, soccer refereeing, volleyball refereeing, first aid. Um, that is all, you're earning credits, you're learning a skill that's transferable to work outside as well as cultural opportunities. That's that that's success, and that's that's where we found some positive motions, and, and we're still working on it because whenever you're refining a process and whenever you're refining your whatever your approach is going to be, you can't be complacent and settle for where you're at. We love what's happened, and we love our building because our kids are fantastic. But we know there's more work to do. There's the, the in incorporating exit surveys to find out did we solicit for some more information? Did we actually hit what we were looking for? We want to have more family nights. We had a very successful one about three weeks ago. We need more because if we're trying to overcome some of the barriers for families that maybe school wasn't the greatest place, we need to extend that invitation and we need to have more opportunities for those to happen. We're moving. We are, I think our, in our building, we like where our direction is, but it's not good enough. We need to go beyond that into our catchment. We need to go with, uh, beyond that into our entire school district and division. And that's where we're going to have some actual leverage. And Because if you keep it in isolation, why, why keep a, a great thing to yourself? You want to be able to share that. The, the last slide here, it's really about trends. And, and, and we could inundate you with specific numbers, but we know that within the three and five years, we're seeing increases in high school completion. We're, we're seeing increases, whether it's three, whether it's four, we're seeing dropout rates start to continually drop. We are, we're watching those exam acceptability rates increase. And even better, the, the last student, Tyra Cardinal, she's going to university in September. I, I don't know how yell, I don't know how loud we yelled, but that was that was so fantastic. More and more students are making their way to post secondary because now it's not a it's not a it's not a, a dream. It's 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 a reality. So we know we have work to do, but it's it's some great work that we're doing, and, and we're proud of it. Thank you.